Okay, so I know that what I have to do is I've got to get some field boundaries into the system. So uh, there's probably multiple different ways to get field boundaries in. I've only got a few fields. I want to put them in manually. I want to be ultra accurate with them. Um, help me out. Okay, perfect. So on our desktop, recommend desktop, just a little bit easier to draw those field boundaries. We usually have a mouse. We can click around the edges of those fields. So recommend a computer. I'd also recommend Google Chrome. If you have more than one internet browser, Google Chrome is where field views optimize. So definitely choose that if you have the option. So climatefieldview.ca, navigate to your Chrome or your internet browser. Let's go to climatefieldview.ca and get to that homepage there. Before we log in, I just want to point out one thing to you. So right in the at the top in the middle, there's a support option. Great place to go if you're running into trouble, need some help. There's lots of videos and documents, even on how to create field boundaries. If you forget what we go through today, how to set up equipment, connect drives, all that information's there. So we're going to log in. I'm going to hit log in and it's going to take me to my account. When you get logged in there, your uh, map will show up as well as your list of fields. If you don't have any fields yet, you won't see anything there. And that's what we're here to do today is add those field boundaries in. So to manually draw those, we're going to start with adding a field. You see add new field at the bottom of your field list. Let's click on that. You can start by giving that field a name. What should we name this field, Troy? Can I name it anything? <laughs> Let's keep it PG-13. Okay, uh, Kieran. Ah, that'll work. And what uh, is the client name for that field? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, maybe G Gary wants to be involved in the farm. Let's get Gary on this. And what about the farm name? Denise. She runs the ship. Yes, yeah, for that sure. Is true. Yeah. Perfect. So once we have our farm name, we can uh, go to our map and actually zoom in till you find your field. So this is a Google Maps background. Um, rural Saskatchewan might not be the most up to date. For some reason, they don't seem to keep that top of mind. But uh, you should still be able to make out where your fields are here. So I'm going to go north of Saskatoon a little bit. Over to Menon here and find my field. So once you've found your field um, and it's close enough that you can see it and are able to draw those boundaries, let's click on draw at the top. I usually choose a polygon to start with and then click um, on the four corners of that field. Click around and then to close that rectangle, click on that first dot that we started with. So now we have a field boundary. It looks great, but I don't farm that entire boundary. Okay. No, so that's actually, you bring up a great point here. So though taking out those trees, sloughs, yards, anything that in that field that we don't farm, super important to remove those, especially when it comes to satellite imagery and accuracy. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more just so it's easier to see uh, the yard in the field there. Once I get more zoomed in, I can click that remove button at the top. I usually choose a polygon to start if I'm working with a yard. And then same as our boundary, let's click around the outside of that yard. Trying to get as close to the edge as we possibly can. And then click on that first dot to finish that polygon. You can always adjust it by moving those dots around. Okay. So at the top of that uh, half section on the north, north part of it, yep. I have a tree row. Okay, so this tree row, we can actually treat very similar to a waterway. Um, there's a waterway removal option, which is really handy. You can just click along the waterway around along that tree line and then tell it how wide it is and we'll be able to easily remove that. So let's click on remove and choose waterway and then click along that tree row there. And then click on that last dot again and it'll ask us how wide that uh, waterway or in this case tree row is. So this tree row is 20 feet. 20 feet wide, click done, and then it'll remove us, remove it for us instead of having to click around that tree row. So do you think that looks fairly accurate? 
It does. There's maybe a few more areas that I'd like to take out. Okay. Well, we can either continue to remove or if one we're happy with it, we can hit that uh, save button over on the left hand side. We also can see our acres right above that save button. So we can uh, double check that that's pretty accurate. Hit save. And then that field will be added to your map and to your list of fields. Perfect. So now that I'm able to do this, what about for my farm customers and my, my uh, all the people out there that farm multiple fields, they um, they don't have the time to necessarily go and do this. Is what are, what are their best options? Yeah, there's a few options. You can see if they have any kids that might they might be able to help them out. <laughs> um, or maybe uh, maybe your agronomist or your retail that you work with actually has your field boundaries stored on their computer or in their software, they may be able to bring that into field view for you so that you wouldn't have to spend time drawing. Other options are bringing in perhaps old sprayer maps, maybe 2019 harvest. If we import those into field view, we can bring that old data over as well as those boundaries so we don't have to draw them. Sounds great. So once I've got all my fields all set up, ready to go, um, uh, what what would, what would I need to do next? Yeah, after we have our fields, I think we can start to set up our equipment, uh, set up our virtual seed and chem sheds, and then we can walk through how we can tag those hybrids and varieties to our fields. Awesome. Thanks for your help.